welcome to my YouTube channel. I go by Fire Tuck uh, because of my history with uh, the fire service. And this morning I wanted to talk a little bit about Cushman scooters and the Buddy 150. I seem to get a lot of reaction to a, a video that I put out a while back when we were working on the little My Buddy uh, 150. Uh, I bought it used and needed to do a little bit of work to it. It sat up for quite some, some years and uh, needed a, a new carburetor and a few other things uh, but we're just going to talk about it and kind of show y'all the the differences between the the new and the old so a little background history i bought a cushman scooter i looked for one for many years uh, a buddy of mine actually restored this one back in 2000 uh, i bought it in 2007 and uh, so that's what i owned it what 14 15 years enjoyed it every minute uh, we collect antique engines the old hit and miss engines and the tractors me and my dad do that and uh, this was kind of one of those things that always interests me that i've seen it shows uh, let's see what today's date is it's july 24 2020 and uh, like i said i just want to give give you a little uh, comparison and a little bit of history behind both of them and uh, if I can answer any questions, I like to wrench a lot on my own. So uh, I had a question that popped up last night. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. This is something that I'm, I'm playing with and I'm trying to, I guess, find my way in YouTube. Uh, but it's, it's a very interesting thing to me to be able to document stuff like this. And maybe one day uh, my daughter or my grandkids or something like that will run, run across it. All right, well, let's take a look at the scooters. So here's the two side by side. You can see a lot of difference in it. The Cushman is um, all metal and the Buddy is mostly plastic. So it tells you where we come from. Still looks good after all these years. This is a 1962, what they call a Super Silver Eagle. And it's because of the shroud and the, I guess you'd call it a cover that covers that back wheel. I've enjoyed it a lot. I figured it up the other day since I bought it. I've only put 510 miles on it. You can see it's a OMC nine horsepower engine. I've added a few pieces of chrome on it. I call it my baby Harley. This particular model of um, uh, Cushman, which was called the Eagle, was uh, in production for 16 years, and they were made out of uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. The motor in it, uh, they went for many years, they used what they called a Husky engine and that husky engine was was their staple early on and then i think it was somewhere in the 60s uh, early 60s that they switched to the omc engine which was a uh, outboard marine corporation was the manufacturer this one still cranks runs drives it's a uh, two-speed uh, suicide shift on the gas tank it's got a foot clutch and a foot brake. Uh, really neat feeling behind it. And the way it rides, it rides like a motorcycle versus the way the scooter feels. Of course, they did make some scooters that what they called step throughs that are, I guess, more similar in the way the buddy does where you put your feet kind of up in front of you which gives you a completely different feeling when you're riding it you kind of feel to me you feel a little wobbly now both of these scooters will run 50 55 mile an hour and the 150 will actually probably depend on who's on it i've had it as fast as about 60 65 mile an hour per the speedometer now that's uh, probably not nowhere near as accurate, so I'd say it'll run a good solid 55 mile an hour. We'll go to the to the buddy. 
the buddy uh, that's a 2009 and this, this is what they call the international and the one that I've got is called the Pampelona if you watched the previous video that I put out his was a St. Topaz uh, but I originally he bought one and I thought it was the craziest thing in the world uh, but when he bought it I said he'll never ride it and uh, Mike my buddy has put a ton of miles on his he looks for excuses to ride this around town and we actually took off not long ago after we adjusted the valves on his and did a 70 mile trip on these things uh, in a day's time uh, they're fun I will say that I enjoy it more just like I enjoy the Cushman uh, being able to ride it in the town settings when you get these things out on two lane roads and highways they're you know with these little tiny wheels and tires they can be a little bit squirrely, but uh, like I said, it's still manageable to get from one place to the other. Uh, but the in-town driving is the funnest part to me. We went to a little town called Washington, North Carolina, and they got a waterfront and everything else and got us some Bill's hot dogs, uh, which are great hot dogs that are known for the area. And uh, sat out and, and ate us some lunch and then went for a little ride again. Let's see how many miles is on it, if I can get it in the video. When I bought this, I don't know if we can see that or not, but it's 511 miles. When I bought this scooter, it had 326 miles on it. A lady had it and she was scared to death of it, according to her. So it sat up probably most of its life. Um, the tires are still original. The question was, is what do you do about changing tires? Uh, that I answered this morning. You know, these are, to be a little tiny tire, they're mighty expensive. Uh, you know, you can tie up as much as 100, 120 bucks in, in a piece for tires. Um, if you take everything off and take it to a dealer, they usually put them on for you for a fraction of the cost as if they had to take everything uh, a part to get the tire and rim off the bike. So I always recommend that. I keep an extra rim, rear, rear rim, rim for my Goldwing GLA 1800, uh, just so that when I need a tire, I just take that spare rim and I just swap the rims and tires out on the bike. Uh, but this bike's pretty much the way you, you, you see it, is the way I bought it. I haven't put anything on it. It come with the the windscreen and and uh, the basket on the front and the little rack on the back. Uh, it was in, I will say, very very nasty. But I could see the the pretty underneath of it. It took me a little while to get everything cleaned up and get the plastics back to where I felt like they were uh, back to factory. I got a couple of secrets uh, with some products that I use uh, through Chemical Guys. And it actually brought that plastic back just like it was new and it could stand a, a little bit more nourishment to get it to where it doesn't quite look as dry. It's, uh, it soaks that stuff up pretty good. Uh, but again, it's, it's a fun ride. Uh, I use it around town, go get groceries. Um, if I need to go to Lowe's and pick up something small, it's got storage underneath the seat. Uh, of course, storage up in the front, and then there's a little cubby hole in the front that you can put some small items. A lot of people ask why the lights on the bottom don't work. Well, that was a, a European, uh, I guess, the, the to make it pass European standards, and when it comes into the US you've got to put the lights that are actually hanging underneath the handlebars to get them to the height that the, the states wanted so a lot of people will take those what they're called uh, a lot of people I've heard it referred to as dead lights they'll take those dead lights and turn them into fog lights by using LEDs or they're actually turn them into uh, turn signals uh, it's got a real uh, I, I hate to say weak stator but when you start changing a lot of the electrical on this 
Uh, I've read that a lot of people have experienced some problems, so just for the sake of longevity and allowing my wife to be able to get on it and not have any problems, then uh, I haven't messed with any of it. I bought this bike actually at her request. Uh, you've got to have a motorcycle license in the state of North Carolina and insurance and tags to ride that bike on the highway. It's not the typical scooter that you see riding up and down the highway, 50 cc's, those are considered mopeds, but this one is actually titled as a motorcycle. Uh, same thing for the Cushman. The Cushman is uh, titled as a motorcycle. And um, when I was looking for ones to restore, that was the hardest thing because most of these Cushmans got stuck in a barn somewhere. I guess folks died over the years, titles got lost. And not that you can't get a title, but it does make it a little bit harder to get a title. Um, when you go back through, I actually had to, um, we had some issues with the way this title was, was done initially. And it come back as a guy that, that uh, shouldn't have, have done the process that, that he did. And if anybody's interested in that story, I'll tell it's kind of a long story, but I actually had to bond this bike and the uh, uh, DMV Theft and Motor Division actually worked with me to make sure that I could get a clean title for this bike to be able to keep it on the road. As far as value, I don't have a clue. Um, I've seen them as cheap as a couple thousand dollars and I've seen them as expensive as $10,000. Uh, I wouldn't sell it for the world. It's something I always wanted, and I plan on keeping it. So you can see the suicide shift on the gas tank. If you pull it all the way back, that puts it in first gear. Uh, you have to mash the clutch in to put it in gear, but after that, it works just like a centrifugal clutch, like a comet clutch. Um, and then when you switch to, to second gear, you do the same thing. You match the foot clutch in, push the lever all the way forward, that puts it in second gear, and that gets you at high speed. Uh, the miles on this bike, probably hard to see again, uh, 67.57. My plan is, and I got it out, I kind of had a, uh, a re-excitement on my Cushman, they're actually having an antique motorcycle. Uh, show at, a, at Denton, North Carolina at the Southeast Old Threshers Union Park. And I actually texted the guy because most of it's, you know, older Harleys, board track racers, uh, some of the early, early motorcycles, uh, single cylinder jobs. And I asked him, I said, is this something y'all be interested in, you know, for me to bring? And he said, of course. Um, so that's my plan in October. They've moved it for this COVID stuff. Uh, it's usually the third weekend in May every year, but they moved it uh, to that, that date in October. I can't remember exactly right offhand, uh, but we're gonna take it up there and, and uh, just check out the, the vintage stuff. I love riding my new stuff, but I also love riding the vintage stuff and messing with it and wrenching on it and tinkering on it. So I just wanna thank everybody for watching and please again, subscribe. I do a lot of random stuff on YouTube. I find it more interesting that way. Um, if something interests me, I feel like it might interest somebody. YouTube has been a great resource over the years. So please subscribe to my channel. Maybe one day I can get like the rest of these folks and uh, it can support a little bit of uh, the cost that's associated with all this equipment. But again, any questions, please feel free to ask. Have a great day, folks.